Before starting the video I'd like to be clear about the fact that a 10 minutes video won't fully explain the reasons and problems which are afflicting Africa. I would like to bring you this topic to understand and see the main reasons of this situation, what caused them and if there is room for improvement in the future, linking obviously the financial topic which is the main subject of this channel. As we all know Africa is a vast and unique continent with 54 different countries, each facing unique challenges and opportunities. While some African countries have made significant progresses in various aspects like for example some of the country in the north or south africa others continue to face development challenges like countries in the middle of the continent like for example uganda so as we said before there are several reasons why africa is in this situation and in this video we will break them down to understand what is the actual situation and if there is a way out of the situation but before continuing with the video i'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel and leave a like to the video if you appreciate the content i bring it will be very helpful for me coming back to the video here are the main key factors that contribute to the diverse development status across the continent. Being a giant continent, Africa has a complex history shaped by colonization in different countries, exploitation of natural resources and the legacy of slavery. The impact of these historical factors can still be felt today, affecting economic and social structures. The biggest moment for Africa was the colonial era, which happened between 19th and 20th century. Various European powers also thanks to the advanced technology engaged in the colonization of Africa. The geography of Africa includes deserts, dense forests and challenging terrains which can pose obstacles to infrastructure development, transportation and communication. Being very big means that there are different conditions across the whole continent, sometimes even extreme conditions, like for example the Sahara Desert. This causes many issues, first of all the absence of drinking and clean water. The center of Africa is very dry and has little connections to seas and rivers. Political instability and governance issues in some African countries have injured economic growth and development. Corruption, poor governance and conflicts can impede progress. Wars, conflicts, interests and difficult conditions have just one single consequence, instability. And instability often brings to crazy things. This is given also by the fact that corruption is always behind the spot. And without a solid government, economy is weak and this means there is no economic progress. So we arrive to point 4. Many African countries face economic challenges, including a dependence on a few key industries such as agriculture or natural resource extraction. Economic diversification is crucial for sustainable development, and political, climatic, natural and health issues are obstacles to the growth. Everywhere is known that growth causes growth, and we will talk specifically about this in topic number 5, but diseases are a treat for economy in some countries. If workers are sick, they won't work, so there is not productivity, which means that there is no growth, so economic consequences appear, like for example inflation, rising interest rates and other specific things I am not willing to discuss in this video. As we anticipated in point 4, healthcare is a big deal in Africa. The prevalence of diseases like malaria, HIV, IDS and other health challenges can have a significant impact on workforce productivity and economic development. Other than the fact that child mortality is still very high. A very high child mortality means that there are and maybe will be too many old people and few young people. And considering that many of the grown and old people have never received a good education, it can affect by far society and also future generations, since nowadays information and knowledge are very very fast. Access to quality education varies across the continent. Inadequate education can limit human capital development and hinder economic progresses. In the African world, many people, above all children, don't have access to basic knowledge, which brings to ignorance, low possibility of social growth, scarce information and last but not least, illiteracy. One of the reasons why there is not a good educational rate is also caused by the absence of schools. This is obviously one of the causes of the economic stall in certain countries and one of the reasons why governments can keep up the pace with the rest of the world. If knowledge is missing, disinformation, crime rate, illiteracy and corruption are imminent consequences. 
Limited infrastructures, including reliable energy, transportation and communication systems can impede economic development. As we mentioned in point 4, growth causes growth. If there aren't strong economic bases, there can't be investments, even on what we think is normal. One example can be hospitals. Obviously there are hospitals in Africa, but are they safe? How is the technology inside these hospitals? Everything is retrograde compared to our world and cannot be 100% safe. Another example can be public transport vehicles and obviously roads. Buildings are not safe for the people inside and all this infrastructure deficit brings to risks that danger and exasperation of the world situation. Africa's position in the global economy is influenced by external factors, such as trade policies, commodity prices and international aid. Being an undeveloped continent, countries can trade much in the global market, which is a symptom of closed and stagnant economy. While some African countries, like for example Egypt, Morocco and Tunisia, manage to open their markets to the world and improve their import-export ratio, which is part of the fuel that pushes countries. The extreme conditions drive away private investments, so many companies fail due to lack of funds and resources. This causes higher prices for first necessary goods, malnutrition, lower chances of life and higher chances of criminality. These are the main reasons that cause African struggle. As we can notice there are a lot of linked reasons and it's like an infinite loop. Like for example the absence of an economic structure causes low investments to countries which cause low lifestyles and all the consequences of bad habits and criminality. I think that with the right investments and a lot of time, Africa can rise again, not in the near future, but maybe in the next 75 to 100 years. Technology is going very fast and we have many examples of it. One example can be South Korea, which 50 years ago was a lost and poor country, while now is one of the most advanced one. Well, I think this is a delicate point because I don't want to look like an opportunistic guy, but I think that many countries have possibility to grow, particularly all the countries near the sea, which can have access to global markets and commerce to develop their economy and internal situations. Unluckily we all know that there are zones which are in desperate conditions and maybe will never recover, but I think that some countries like for example Egypt will be part of the future economy in an important way. With this I'm not giving you financial advices. Obviously, it's very very hard to be detailed about the world situation. This video just wanted to show people all the most important issues that affect Africa. So what do you think about Africa? Share with me your opinions, I will be happy to read and discuss on them with you. I hope you enjoyed this video, see you in the next one.